Hello, my name is Rob Nepel with Cedar Digital Core, and I'd like to welcome you to our presentation on crowdsourcing for enhanced shelter awareness. Cedar uses the power of crowdsourcing and innovative technology to address information gaps during disasters. Our core competency is finding, validating, and organizing information from online sources in real time. We provide this information to partners like Napsche Foundation, GIS Corps, and FEMA, and also broadcast the most critical messages to the public via our social media channels. Cedar's origins trace back to a group of spontaneous volunteers who came together during the 2017 hurricane season. After assisting with volunteer rescue efforts for Hurricane Irma, by crowdsourcing reports from local officials and the public, they were able to gather status on the availability of power, water, and other critical lifelines, which they then provided on a public information map and via a daily internet radio broadcast in both English and Spanish that was sent to the island. After hurricane season finally ended in early 2018, members of that original group decided to formally organize and continue the work and thus Cedar was born. While our initial focus was with hurricanes, over the past three years, we've expanded our focus to an all hazards approach. In the three years since our founding, in addition to activating for every major Atlantic storm to impact the US, We've also responded to major wildfires in the West, Puerto Rico's earthquake in January 2020, COVID-19, and other significant incidents impacting public safety. CEDAR is somewhat unusual among crowdsourcing groups in that we self-activate. We don't wait for official agencies to ask. When we see an information gap that we can help by filling, we get moving immediately. But we do love to be asked, and we're glad to partner with agencies at all levels. We're one of the first groups to join the FEMA Crowdsourcing Coordination Initiative, participated in the 2018 and 2019 national level exercises, and continue to work closely with FEMA, as well as our good friends and colleagues at partner organizations like GIS Corps and NAPSI Foundation. So why is CEDAR involved with shelters? What's the problem that we're trying to address? After all, we've got the national shelter system. Well, the NSS is great and a lot of work has gone into it, but it was never really intended for tracking dynamic shelter status. It's not updated in real time, and it has incomplete data by design as it focuses on the Red Cross and their partner shelters. So as a result, the NSS can miss shelters at the local level, especially new ones. And sometimes the data in the NSS is inaccurate. For example, during our activation for Tropical Storm Karen in 2019, Cedar noted a number of shelter locations in Puerto Rico which had significantly inaccurate lat long locations in the NSS compared to facts on the ground. And then we have state and local systems. Some states do a great job of tracking shelters at their level, others do not. Really, the action happens mostly at the local level down with counties. Some counties, again, do things great, other counties, not so much. And so the net result of all this taken together is that when there's a major disaster, particularly if it spans multiple jurisdictions at the county and state level, there's no one place that the public can go to fully understand what shelters are available, because sometimes the nearest shelter is in the next county over or even in the next state over. For example, we've seen this happen frequently with Louisiana, where shelters are established in Houston or Dallas for residents evacuating from western Louisiana. In 2018, FEMA's Crowdsourcing Coordination Unit asked for CEDAR's help tracking shelter status across the multiple states impacted by Hurricane Florence. Over 17 days, CEDAR identified and tracked the status of more than 350 shelters across North Carolina, South Carolina, Virginia, and neighboring states. We provided those shelters in a public, downloadable feature layer, which FEMA used, and which also enabled partners like Napsche Foundation to include Cedar's shelter information in their situational awareness and public information maps. Since our Florence activation, Cedar has provided shelter maps for every major Atlantic storm expected to impact the U.S. This example from Hurricane Dorian shows the shelters opening and then closing as the storm moved up the coast. So how does CEDAR do this, and what the heck is crowdsourcing anyway? Well, if there's only one thing that you take away from this presentation, I hope it's that you'll remember this. Crowdsourced does not mean unofficial. What I mean by that is crowdsourcing refers to the process of how information is gathered. It doesn't actually say anything at all about where that information came from. This is relevant because as CEDAR does our crowdsourcing for shelters, the vast majority of our information comes directly from official sources, such as county websites or their social media accounts. The value CEDAR provides is bringing all those nuggets of information from all those individual jurisdictions together into a single common operating picture of shelters across the full extent of an incident. Now here's a little more about CEDAR's shelter process. On the left, you'll see the various sources that we monitor for the latest shelter information. As I mentioned, websites and social media accounts from county or state agencies are our most common source. 
but we also monitor local media and social media posts from the general public, as sometimes local residents or reporters will be aware of new information about shelters or about where local officials are currently posting the latest information. But sometimes, official sources may not be posting information, whether due to communication problems or other issues. Then we have to get more creative and sometimes use actual visual sources, such as Civil Air Patrol photos or the Crowdsource Disaster Photos Map, which is a joint project between NAPCHI, GIS Corps, and CEDAR that gathers photos publicly posted on social media, which show the aftermath of an incident, sometimes including photos from either around or inside shelter locations. So how do we monitor these sources? Well, option one is direct monitoring. Train volunteers looking at social media and websites, checking them regularly for updates the old-fashioned way with a pair of human eyes. But we provide leverage to our volunteer efforts by also implementing automated social media searches tailored to each activation. The automations highlight posts that are likely to be of interest so that a lot of the drudge work is taken out of searching social media and our human volunteers can focus their energies on identifying the truly valuable information and more importantly, validating and checking that information. Once a shelter update is validated through our QA process, it's published to CEDAR's publicly available shelter map and feature layers. And to talk more about that part of our process, I'll hand off to my colleague Ariana Mercer, who leads CEDAR's shelter GIS efforts. Hi, my name is Ariana Mercer, and I've been a volunteer with CEDAR for a couple of years. Uh, in 2020, I helped revamp our shelter mapping process to help make it a little bit cleaner and allow for more real-time updates without needing someone to republish the shelter layer every time a shelter opened or closed. So what we have now is a public application showing our hosted feature layers and in the pop-up we have a source link that will take you to the original source where we got that information whether it's a county website a tweet facebook post and we also have a timestamp showing when the shelter was last updated so the public can see okay if this was updated just a couple of hours ago it's probably accurate or if it hasn't been updated in a couple days you might want to check the source and see if there's been any updates uh, there's also a link to directions via Google, Google Maps, which will open up in the Google Maps app if you're on a mobile device or in a new tab on a web browser, and that'll route someone from their current location to the shelter. So we share these layers on a public app that Cedar provides, as well as with other organizations like NAPSG, and they include the shelters on their situa situational awareness map. Of course, in 2020, sheltering looked a lot different from pre previous years due to COVID-19. So we immediately saw a lot of places opening up that were not overnight shelters as we would usually think of them, but instead gathering places where people could go for information and to be directed to non-congregate shelters, which mostly meant hotels. So Cedar created a, a separate layer for these evacuation centers, and that is shared publicly as well. Uh, and we'll just have to see going into the future what sheltering looks like, if evacuation centers stick around, or if we go back to congregate sheltering. So how do we make this work exactly? Uh, Rob outlined earlier the way that CEDAR gathers and checks information. CEDAR's volunteers can then take the shelter locations that are found and plot them on a map, enter some additional information, hit save, and immediately those locations are shown on the public map. This process doesn't require a GIS professional to do it. Anyone who has used a mapping application on their phone has the skills to create a new shelter point on our map. When we're adding a new location, the ArcGIS application interface allows for easily switching between aerial imagery, open street map, and topographic map layers as base maps. And that helps our volunteers double check that they're putting the shelter in the right spot. This is especially helpful in places like Puerto Rico, where a street address may bring you to a totally different location than the building you're actually looking for. Oftentimes, the location already exists in our feature layer. So with a couple of clicks, our volunteers can set the location to open and have it immediately show up on the public map. So that's a little bit about our process. Again, we make these layers public, so anyone interested can use them on your own map or export the data. We will have links at the end of this presentation to our shelter and evacuation center layers, and everyone is free to add them to your own web maps. Uh, the layers are set up to show only active shelter locations by default. Uh, so if you'd like to see the inactive locations, you can go in and remove the filter and adjust the symbology, and then you'll see everything in those layers. Thank you, Ariana. So what's next? Well, CEDAR is continuing as always to evolve our best practices, processes, and technologies, and we're very much interested in staying in touch with our friends at NAPSI Foundation in particular. We recognize that coordination and communication between all the various organizations, agencies, and individuals addressing this challenge is critical. In that spirit, we follow some core guiding principles in our shelter work and in all our crowdsourcing efforts.
First and in front of everything is accuracy, providing high quality information via proven validation processes. Second, traceability. We want to provide transparency and clarity on exactly where the information we are providing was found. So we include links to official sources and also note when that, those sources were last checked. And finally, openness and interoperability. We want to align our efforts with community best practices and standards where they exist, and also provide our data via APIs and data formats which enable easy and automated reuse of our information by other organizations via techniques like our ArcGIS feature layers. And that brings us to the end of our presentation for today. I just wanted to give a special thanks to all of our volunteers at CEDAR, wonderful people who are working their hearts out on the COVID crisis, shelters, and every other thing that comes our way. And also to all of our colleagues and friends at groups like NAPSI Foundation, GIS Corps, and the Red Cross. And of course, everybody at FEMA, and most of all, the folks working at the state and local level. Whether with boots on the ground or seats in the EEOC, you're the folks that make it all really happen. We would welcome hearing from any of you who are listening to this, with this year's conference being virtual for obvious reasons. Our team at Cedar is rather bummed that we won't get to meet and see all of you in person. So please reach out if you've got a question, comment, or feedback. Our, con our contact information is at the bottom here. My email's there and also links to our feature layers and our actual public shelter map. We hope we'll talk to you soon.